Hola. Very good. We're about to see radical grace. Uh, I'm Jessica from Indonesia. Uh, the most touching part uh, from the video is when when the nun have a conversation with a guy, then he said that, I love you, I love the people. Uh, it, it's my reflection. How love and compassion can give us uh, courage and willingness um, to break our limitation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I converted my religion seven years ago. I, I got baptized 2009. And I am learning uh, about the Catholic, the tradition of Catholic in the Vatican too. And last um, one month ago, we had a session about faith, uh, church and mission. So now I really confused about these things. So I don't know, but I'm inspired to learn more about the theology and the, uh, this kind of issues and gender equality. So. At least uh, I am inspired by Holy Spirit to do this video. Thank you. I just wanted to ask these two men, do they want to be the priesthood or priest or uh, are they confident to be the ordinated if we had, uh, as the priest, uh, if we had a chance? Do you want to answer? Are you confident to be ordinated? Yes, I am. If I am ordained, or ordained, ordained, then if it can solve, it can it can help to serve others. Yes, I am. I am confident. I think the best part that I can I can say one of the most important part in the video is when they try to visit and go back and try to. Ch tried to see how how was the leadership of women. I felt so excited about it. Maybe because uh, I love reading and studying history. But when I saw a lot of archaeological evidences that women, long time ago, they were leaders. And I felt excited. And I think I've shared it to few that before I, I even thought of entering uh, religious life, though it's not obvious. But then after after discerning, I told a friend, a priest, that I don't want to be a nun anymore. I want to be a priest. And then he laughed at me, and then he said, My child, not in your lifetime. But I did not I did not take it negatively. Because he said not in my lifetime. So maybe my lifetime would end like 70, 80 years, but it's possible. Maybe because the reason why I, I didn't stick with the idea of being a nun, maybe because I believe that nuns must do something more, a lot more. They can do more than what they are doing now. They, they must be empowered. They must join in governance like what the nuns in the video did. So even if I did choose either ways, being lay is something like what uh, Dr. Paul said, being with the community and serving with the community. I think I, I feel fulfilled. And I will watch it again for sure. Thank the you. The new thing struck me that we are all here because we want change. And I think change starts from below. Sometimes we wait for, we wait for the bishops to change and, and the priests to change. 
But I think uh, we are pastoral leaders in the youth ministry, or we are priests, or we are sisters. We, are, we can bring about change uh, in, our own, in our own locality, in our own organization, you know, just, as the, just as the sisters did. So they brought about change uh, in, their, uh, in their own way of life. They did not wait for Vatican to tell them <coughs> that you have to change. So I think this is one lesson that we can, uh, we can learn. Secondly, uh, we are all leaders. And I think Pope Francis has made a difference also in the sense of his leadership style. So I think we also as leaders uh, in the church or in our organizations, we can bring about change by our own lifestyle. Thank you very much. When I see this film, uh, I am very impressed by the nun and made me reflect to the work that I am working with the uh, indigenous called uh, Lahu. Uh, they are shaman. And the Lahu is pre modern. So this society has opened what they call Krishna, Krishna is God. Krishna Yalawe, God is coming. When God is coming, they have a shaman, a man, and also a shaman, a woman. And they have a very uh, sacred, and they share uh, their missions in their community. But when I see the Catholic uh, church of uh, struggling in this uh, structure of since uh, Constantinople, no? uh, time that the uh, hierarchical, and also what we call it uh, androcentric. No? And this society is becoming more and more uh, androcentric. I, I reflect back why the church should go to immerse in the ethnic minorities in relation between the shaman of women and the shaman of men. I feel I have to kneel down to the shaman woman. She is so sacred and she heals the people. And sometimes shaman, the male shaman is not sacred. So he has to really uh, obey the woman, ask the woman to bless him so that God is blessing him so that he has more grace. So that kind of relation now is really in uh, my diocese. So I would like uh, the church, the highly biblical church, exposed and immersed in that relation between uh, the man and the woman, shamanism, one. So the second part, I read uh, Father Hobsbawm. Uh, he he's, uh, write the history of the Catholic priest. Oh, Jesus doesn't want a priest. 600 years of the Catholic priest. Uh, Jesus in the early church have not used the word hierios. This word is hierios is a priest of the Hebrew. But Jesus, I mean the first, they used the word presbyterium. Presbyterium is the elders. And the elder is a woman and a man. Also, in that book, it's very important. So I think we have to enter into the about six centuries. And if you would like to be a priest, we have to question that also, because Jesus doesn't want it. And Jesus wants a community, also a woman community, the elders, who also uh, reach uh, church or also breaking the bread, also the woman at that time. So I think this also history of the book uh, has to be really uh, tackled in theology and the history of the early church on that time. So the book called uh, Father of, of, of Smart, I think. If this one is is uh, reading, I think it has to be uh, take seriously. Thank you, but I would like really okay. to uh, the church to 
to learn from the shaman people. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I just uh, yeah, I'm Andrew from the Philippines. Um, it struck me mm -hmm. I follow the this controversy mm -hmm. since the very beginning and, and I rejoiced and finally there was something done uh, with regard to the situation. It was uh, struck me that this movie is actually an illustration of what Pope Francis calls the temptation of the church today. One of the three temptations. Well, the first one is idea, uh, the gospel becomes ideology, the second functionalism, and the third uh, clericalism. And he says clericalism is actually dominating spaces. And uh, I, I personally believe that the sisters taught the institutional church, the hierarchy, that indeed we cannot dominate space, spaces, human spaces, existential spaces. We have to innovate spaces together with that person. So. Uh, thank you. Okay. Um, Laura, from the striking moment uh, I record from the video was yeah. during the announcement of the Pope, who is the Pope, uh, she asked, who is she? Uh, and suddenly the main Pope came. And seeing her face, I got a feeling like maybe inside, deep inside her mind, uh, she must uh, have expected to have a female Pope. Uh, maybe she couldn't become, but maybe in future there can be a female pop. Why can't there be a female pop? <laughs> and or maybe a male pop and a female pop walking together. I don't know. But just something like that came to my mind. Or maybe her feeling of I don't know. Maybe some kind of feeling she must have undergone. Um, and also, everyone is happy for the pop. Yes. Um, and another one I felt. Uh, to go back to my uh, village where my parish is uh, to connect with the parish priest and to develop something similar to this uh, was something came to my mind but still need to work upon. Thank you. 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 Thank you.